fact of getting rid of the charger for this car. It's like the yeah, white one. That was a I cool felt like car. I finally had like the right charger and that was the sacrifice to make this one happen. But it was like, you know, 383 two barrel charger, automatic versus 446 pack, four speed Dana, you know, yeah. on and on and on. It's kind of a no brainer. You And again, a white charger is just kind of, yeah. you know, it's not real look at me, but. But yeah, this thing's definitely over the top. Yeah, so what's the backstory on this car? Came out of Arizona. So yeah, it came out of uh, Tucson. Um, oh, was, was it the, Tucson? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, it was a, the, the five car estate. From yeah. Cover of Hot Rod Magazine. and Yeah. Um, so basically, Randy found the five, well, rewind. Uh, Mark that owned them passed away. Well, it's probably been close to two years ago now. Um, and he was military, loved the cars, like anti unleaded fuel, like he was an activist, he did all kinds of cool stuff, and he just he loved his old cars. So I wanna say early seventies he bought the sixty eight Shelby Mustang from the estate. Um, I think the Charger five hundred and the um Hemi Challenger that Troy got, Mopar's 5150, mm -hmm. those were, uh, I think those were the next cars that he got, then he bought this one, and then he had the RT Charger that was supposed to be like a parts car or something, and he had a few others over the years that, were, yeah. you know, who knows how that panned out, but these cars he had since the 70s, he bought this one at Bill Breck Dodge in Tucson in 74 for $997, wow. so, um, basically um, had the cars all the years would go to shows occasionally like they were part of some kind of little club never raced them never beat on them never modified them never primered them you know yeah, he yeah. just he just had them yeah um, and because he was in Tucson for the most part you know they sat outside obviously who's got a five car garage for all these cars right um, the Charger 500 stayed in the garage and uh, he had a shop but that's where he kept like all his business equipment so the cars just sat outside. Um, he passed away. His um, one of his best friends was, I believe, friends with Randy Carlson's brother. So okay. that's how Randy got involved in it. Oh, okay. um, basically, Randy was hired to handle the Help. estate, yeah. sell all the cars and parts, get the widow as much money as possible for all the cars. So right. it was kind of a kind of like a silent auction type thing of you know. The cars were out in the open. He did YouTube videos on them. He put them out there, yeah. and it was kind of like, if anybody's interested, hit me up and you know throw your best offer at it, and right. we'll see where it goes. Um, so, basically, I, I met him from when I did the Sticker Shock show with mm -hmm. the Charger. He was one of the appraisers on there. Um, 70 RT, 440, four barrel. Yeah, white three cream, and it was an auto car that somebody had put a four speed in. Okay. But neat car. I mean, kind of on the level of this, like kind of survivor ish. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was one of my favorite cars that you've ever had. Right? You know, it's funny because when I had it, I didn't care for it. Really? Looking back on it, I'm like, God, that car was cool. You yeah. know, other than Y3 Cream was kind of boring. Yeah, yeah. But it's but it's rare. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, when Randy basically found the cars, he went out, looked at them, took a few pictures, and he sent me a few pictures one morning. I was getting ready for work, halfway away. I'm like, holy shit! You know, like a Hemi car. <laughs> Yeah, I saw this car and I was like, oh my God, a Super B. And I was like, oh wait, it's an RT. And then he sent a picture of the engine and then he sent a picture of the Mintag and it was like, oh my God, you know, yeah. and the pistol grip. Um, I didn't think I had any chance in any of the cars. And basically I wanted to buy all the parts, you know, from the estate or at least some of the parts. And I was interested in the cars, but I figured they'd be out of my league. Mm -hmm. So um, basically I told Randy, you know, hey, I'd love to just be a part of it. And if there's anything I can do to help to help authenticate or look at VIN numbers and you know, right. make sure their numbers matching and the carburetors are the right carburetors and the radiators are right and all that stuff. Right. Um, so I started doing all that and at first I had like serious interest in the Charger 500. I wanted to sell my white on white 68 Charger to buy the Charger 500 because I figured upgrade. Yeah. it would be an upgrade. But it was F8 green and it was a clean car but it was F8 green. Yeah. <laughs> Did I mention it was green? Yeah. <laughs> and then well, it was gr green, but F8. Yeah, and it was F8 green. Yeah. Um, I think I had that color carpet in the 90s. Yeah. But, 
it, it was an automatic, it was a calm shift. It just wasn't like an exciting car. You know, yeah. the more I looked at it and the more I looked at this car and then we did a, a YouTube video with Randy on, you know, going through this car and digging out all the parts and cleaning it out. Yeah, I saw that. You were like pulling stuff out of the trunk and six packs. Yeah, and, you exactly. know, a bunch of junk. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, like scrap metal. <laughs> but I, I pretty much, as I was doing it, you know, the more I looked at this car, it just it started hitting me. It was like, holy crap, you know, it has everything, you know, yeah. six pack, four speed, all numbers matching, green. bright green. green. It's got freaking <laughs> scoops on the hood and on the sides. Yeah. And these big, you know, just everything about it's just like, yeah. look at me and, you know, it, it like, to me, it screams muscle car. It's everything, yeah. like, if you were to, like, if Homer Simpson drew a muscle car, yeah, that, that's what it would look like. Yeah, so exactly. it was just one of those ones, and it just like how could you get bored with four tens and a Dana and a four speed? Yeah. So and an eight track, but uh, so what happened? You were just like so I pretty it, much it, it clicked. It just snapped, and it, then you like, clicked. I had made an offer on the Charger 500 that I, I thought was going to work, and I think Randy thought was going to work, and. Um, I messaged Randy early in the morning, like the day after we went over this car, and I said, "Man, I, th I think I'm going to change. Like, I don't. I think I want that car instead." Yeah. And uh, he had had some pretty good offers on it, so I knew close to where it was going to be, and I, I basically kind of threw threw it all in on it. And, yeah. You know, I think the fact that I had helped with the estate um, and kind of helped with the other cars, and yeah. done what I could to, you know, just kind of tell him anything and everything I could about it. Right. You know, I, Pretty much from the start, I told kind of Randy what I thought about, you know, what I thought the values would be roughly, you know, where, you know, some of them were close and some of them I was off, but, yeah. you know, how often do you find unrestored cars like this to compare yeah. them off of? So. Yeah, not a lot. But uh, I'm going to yeah. guess the Challenger, the Hemi Challenger, was the one you're way off on, or it went it went more than I thought, um, but it it's still looking back on it. I, I blew it. I should have, I don't know, pulled money out of my house or I should have done <laughs> should have something because, yeah, I mean, 71 Hemi four-speed Challenger, yeah. where would you ever, you know. But, it, but that's hard. I mean, if you take that kind of out of the equation, you just have this car and that car. If you're that little kid, you yeah, know, it, like it a 10-year-old kid and you're like standing, you're in Toys R Us and you're looking at the two Hot Wheels. Yeah. Like, I'd be all over this car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, both. I, I, I got a thing for e-bodies. I mean, yeah. more so Kudas, but yeah. it, it definitely, you know, they were both. And the whole thing was just so overwhelming, too, because yeah. you get all five of the cars in the same place, and it was like, you couldn't even focus, you know. And the, in the end, one of the, I think one of the last cars he sold was the Charger RT, and it was a red on white with a white top, white tail stripe, 69 RT, yeah. numbers matching car. Yeah. And everybody that looked at it that had seen all the other cars were like man eh, it's kind of a piece of shit well in reality like that car was it was amazing like yeah. it was really a good car yeah. and i want to say it sold for like 18 to 20 grand somewhere in there yeah. you know it was really priced right and and he had it listed everywhere and it seemed like nobody wanted it yeah, i think it, it just blows my mind dude. i think with all the others it just didn't well yeah i mean it was it 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 was practically a 318 car in the mix, you know, I mean, because it was... Exactly. You got a Charger 500, a Shelby Mustang, a Hemi yeah. car, and a six-pack car. Right. And so just to yeah. be clear, a 69 Charger 500, not a yeah. 75. No, it's like a, the real deal. Yeah, NASCAR. Yeah. 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 Which, yeah. That, that was a neat one, too, because I got to really look over that car. Um, and it was, you know, the first, obviously I've seen them at shows and stuff, but yeah. I, mean, I got to crawl around and poke at it and yeah. really look at it. And it was so crazy how simple and kind of primitive those things are i yeah. mean the like the the way they adapted the grills into them yeah. they're just like cheesy brackets yeah. that like yeah. looks like somebody bent in their garage and well, rigged it in there leftover 68 cornet grills it, it you know really like 69 and it, even uh like one of the things i noticed on it that was a trip was it still had the vacuum reservoir for the headlights underneath the oh, battery tray really because that's that's how they built the it car. went down the assembly line you know and yeah. then like the fender tag was weird because some of the codes on it you know, and I'm not great with those. I, I try to learn them as I can, but yeah. one of the codes on it, I forget what it was, was like an unfinished top because basically they sold it like a vinyl top car with no vinyl top on it. So it was like unprepped or unfinished yeah. because then it went to that other company that did Creative the Industries. back window and yeah, the, put the plug in it. And even that, like the trunk lid, like it looked like somebody, I don't know, freaking 
ran a saw along it <laughs> and like folded that lip under yeah. it. I mean, and it, it it was functional, but yeah. y- you know, you could definitely tell that it wasn't like done at Chrysler. It yeah, wasn't yeah. like a legit, you know. Yeah. That's, but it, it was a neat car. But you know, and in the end, it, I'm glad I got this over that just because it's you know, yeah, again, no, all the four speed and it's you know, I think there's less of these built. Yeah. So, so when I was, let me check on this real quick. I'll make sure everything's cool. Actually, I'm gonna stop. Yeah, that would so, take a bullshit forever. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that that car, 398 of them. Yeah. How many? Um, so I, I forget the number altogether of V code Cornet RTs, but of four speed V codes, it's uh, 97. One of 97. Wow. I mean, so like if you're just the average Joe kind of walking in there, yeah. I think I would have, aside from the Hemi Challenger, you know. One I, of 57, I believe, on the Hemi car. Yeah. I mean, just because so. it's Hemi, you automatically know it's a rare car. Oh, yeah. But aside from that, you look at the group of cars, I would have thought the Charger 500 would be probably, my first thought would be that's the rarest car here. Mm-hmm. Like that would be the one you'd want a beeline for. And, and I kind of did to an extent and that was a car that stayed in the garage so it yeah. was in the best shape they had a newer legendary interior in it it, it really was a nice car yeah um but again you know it just i don't know yeah, and really looking at all the cars it was hard to justify like any kind of prices on them because it's like you know yeah it's a hemi car but it needs a full restoration yeah and you're talking hundred thousand dollars plus yeah for a car that needs every you know if you're on that kind of car you're gonna have to spend that kind of money to make it right. yeah but right. i mean unless you go this route which i mean even when i bought this car i didn't really think that i would just leave it the way it is i thought yeah. i'd do a little more to make it but i, I kind of grown to like it the way it yeah. is you know it's, i mean i like the tina car so i yeah, think it, I, I think mean, it's perfect and it, there's a, a a a very fine balance between like how much original paint needs to be on the car versus how much, you know, uh, mm-hmm. fade of the paint and stuff. I think this car has a really good balance of it. Because I've seen them where they get, like, too much of the paint is gone, and it's like, it just feels like you should restore it, you know? And then not enough, and then it just doesn't have that patina look, you know? It just looks yeah. like old, dingy paint, you know? Well, the original plan, a friend of mine was going to blend the top, um, and he does a lot of older, like, patina cars, so he was going to leave enough to where it still had some but so to like where the edges are still breaking yeah through. the edges probably would have broken through but the tops would have been green yeah um, and again you know the more everybody i talked to on it you know it seemed like in general you know everybody was like nah leave it alone and the more i thought about it you know but freiberger was the one that actually told me that he goes think about it. if that car is fully restored and at a show and in line with all the other restored ones Everybody's gonna walk right past that one to yeah. go look at the one that looks like this yeah. because it stands out and it's different. It does. You know, it's just unique. So that, that's what I've noticed is that because you got basically a car like this has a thumbprint. You know, the cars that are all restored, they kind of become cookie cutter. Mm-hmm. And I mean, as bitching as they are and as beautiful as they look, and don't get me wrong, like I love to drive a restored one, but at the same time, it's like character. Like the car yeah. that looks like this has all this character. Oh. And if enough people see this car you know 10 oh. 15 20 years from now they see this car again they're gonna know like the whole lineage to it yeah if it got totally restored you're not gonna know yeah, any definitely. of its past you know well and even at the little show we went to today you know yeah. people would walk up and they knew the car from just the, the backstory or, whether yeah. it was hot rod magazine or you know youtube videos or right. whatever so right or yeah. muscle cars at the strip the infamous drag race there yeah. that, the uh <laughs> Johnny Mopar videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This car killed the Troy's uh, Hemi Challenger. Yeah. Sure. Well, I don't know about killed it, but <laughs> it ran pretty good. I mean, enough that I kicked the hazards on on him. <laughs> That's true. He just had to stick it to him and twist uh-huh. a little. Huh? I was like, God, I hope the hazards work and it doesn't melt the wiring harness in this big. Oh shit! Yeah. But you were asleep at the light. What happened oh, there? Big time, dude. That was the first time I'd been on a drag strip in like. 12 years yeah so i mean yeah. going from racing a couple times a week to yeah. not at all for all those years yeah. but it, it definitely it, it felt good to get out there it was fun yeah it was the funnest slow pass i've ever made yeah. in my life but it what's uh I, I forget the driver's name of the challenger he's like buddy oh uh tony tony Sedona. tony i mean 
dude. I mean, he looked like he was smiling ear to ear. Oh, I yeah. mean, just like, can you imagine? Oh, yeah. I mean, just the opportunity of a lifetime. Well, and just the fact that he was smiling after all, like that rat shit and dust <laughs> and everything was all <laughs> flying around inside that car. Yeah. Before we raced, he was peeling out chunks of the headliner because he couldn't see because the headliner was falling yeah. down on him. It was, it was pretty this good. This is the greatest, man. And this thing, when I took off, I don't, I revved it up, I don't know, high enough and just dumped the clutch and rat shit and dirt and all kinds of shit came out from underneath the dash and it was hitting me in the legs and I'm like, oh man, I grab second and it freaking does it again. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Oh shit! Man. I mean, I've cleaned this thing out so many times, and it was just it's you know, still falling out. If you saw Randy's videos when we cleaned it out, I mean, everybody was like, "Oh my God, you're gonna get sick from cleaning that thing!" I yeah. mean, it was like eight inches of rat shit, and <laughs> just it was horrible. But did you ever see Birdsong video he did? I think it was on his uh, that turquoise charger. Huh? I, I, I watched a bunch of them. But... He he went to like a. a a car wash and a power washer. I mean, the, the rat shit in the bottom of that car was like like that thick. I mean, yeah. it was insane. That That's how this one was. And surprisingly, like, I would have thought that it would just be foul and yeah. like stink inside. Yeah. And I don't know if from being out in the desert or what, or if it's different kinds of rats out there, but it, <laughs> luckily it didn't smell inside. I mean, because the seats are still the seats that were in it. I yeah. Mean, yeah. And clean them as much as I could. And yeah, it's not, I mean, the little tree in the mirror is just because it matched the car, not because yeah. it stinks. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. But yeah, it was a fun race. It was definitely that was cool. It was very I, cool. I'd, I'd like to do it again. But yeah, dude, I I, maybe, maybe challenge him with another barn find with the. Oh, there you go. Now you show up with the Hemi car, and he'll show up with the six pack. And... Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure he sure he could dig something up. I don't know, I'll have to make sure I'm ready this time. <laughs> yeah, I think most people are convinced uh, on the track trip that the, the six pack will walk away from the Hemi. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, honestly, I think had they got a better start, he, you know, brought it up yeah. and clutch a little harder. And, and, and especially with me sleeping, he probably would have got me. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I, Tony's defense, I mean, I, I heard it, it almost didn't start in the uh, standing yeah, area. Yeah, it, it was, was like, oh, man, it, the carburetors were not yeah. running at optimum. Well, and I was worried about this thing overheating, and it was funny because after the race, theirs was overheating and this wasn't. <laughs> I was like, Ooh, all right, <laughs> that's pretty good. Oh, but, man freaking awesome but yeah it was it was definitely fun that's this thing it still needs carburetors tweaked on i mean i rebuilt them but i'm by no means a six-pack expert, expert and, yeah, yeah you know i know there's plugs on the bottom of the metering blocks that you got to knock out to really do it right and to tune yeah. them right so at some point I, I may pay somebody to just do the carburetors legit and make yeah. sure it's good i mean it runs good it sounds good yeah it, it runs really good yeah. It's it's a good runner. I mean, like I said, it's got the one little overheating problem, and every once in a while the idle will go up or it'll drop down and do some weird stuff. Yeah. But I mean, it's got the not only the original intake on it, but I don't think it's ever had the gaskets changed in it. I mean, I think it has the original valley pan. Wow. Yeah. I mean, everything is original negative battery cable. Everything is like so. I'm sure it's probably got some sort of a vacuum leak after sitting yeah. all those years. And, yeah. You know, with that metal pan. And this car, it's. Other than the headers, I mean, there's like only a couple of things on this whole car that is not original. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's the scoops I put on, but I have the originals just because they I found green ones that match better and yeah. the old ones look like crap. Okay. Um, but yeah, as far as like numbers type parts, the radiator was swapped. It had a Mallory dual point in it when I got it, and it had rotted out hooker headers. So I replaced it with TTI headers. Um, I have correct manifolds for it that i gathered since then but yeah. i figured it already had headers so i might as well go that route yeah um the radiator was like an aftermarket deal had a mallory dual point and i put electronic ignition in it and i think that's it other than that everything's stock under the hood Sweet. and it's all 100 percent numbers matching engine's never been apart oh, um, i mean when you start adding all that those kind of, kind of things up it's like what are the odds of finding a car yeah, you, you, we check, you create those boxes to check and you go okay go find a car like that yeah well and especially when you get to you know on top of all that then it's a dana 6410 super yeah. track pack it's got the dash speakers and the freaking the eight track it's got to me i prefer the buddy seat because you know the pistol grip just looks like it's like in your face it's just yeah. over exaggerated and huge and yeah. you know the console kind of dumbs it down a little bit yeah. just everything about it kind of I don't know and then the color you know most of 
the green cars that you see typically have white or typically have black top, black interior, and black stripe. Yeah. And so far, the only other one I've seen, Cornet RT, with a white top, white interior, and white stripe, is a Hemi car that was like a. It was like one of the Chrysler display cars that they put out early that they took to shows. Okay. And that's the only other one I've seen. I think that car has like twenty thousand miles on it. It still exists. It still exists. Wow. It's it's beautiful. I mean, I would imagine it's got to be one of the most valuable of these cars. So but. there was speculation that maybe this car was that car. You got confirmation that that car was the I, Hemi. Car I haven't got or? confirmation that that was the Hemi car. I still okay. think this could be because the Hemi was already out. The six pack. You know, new. aside from the A12, was new. You know, yeah. so yeah. in a normal production car, this was the first year, really. Yeah, and in that picture, it was from uh, some Detroit auto show from, I believe, February of 1970. This car was built in November of '69. Um, but yeah, it, it would totally fit because it was a green car. It was a Ram Charger car, hoods, uh, hood pins, and it had the white top, white stripe, yeah. white interior. So, man, I just but. I hope there's like some picture that surfaces. I know. Like I'd love to find something where yeah. it could just tie it. Because the other one too that it made me wonder, and maybe I'm digging too deep in it, but um, in that auto show picture, it had Craig SS's on it, and this car always had the 390 rally wheels on it. The you know 15 by 7 rallies. Yeah. Um, since Mark had got it, all the pictures going back, it had those rally wheels on it. Well, when Randy got the cars, somebody looked at the Hemi car and said, oh, those 390 wheels belong on the Hemi car. They're dated for the Hemi car. But they weren't. They were dated late 71 after the Hemi car was built, so they weren't correct for it either. Okay. But my speculation with it was being that it had a late 71 uh, rally wheel on it, maybe it was that car that was used on display with the Krager SS's on it, and then before they put it for sale oh. at the dealership, they took the Krager SS's yeah. off and put 390 wheels back on. Uh, wow, that would make a which lot would of sense. make sense because yeah. why else? Why else would a car that was so original yeah. have late '71 rally wheels on it? Yeah. It just didn't make sense. So yeah. that that's kind of my theory to it of that could make it. You know, like I said, maybe I'm digging too deep on it, but yeah, it, it seems plausible. Know, plausible. Yeah. So, but yeah. then you know, like I said, everything else in it. First year for the six pack. First year for the pistol grip. The pistol grip with no console, it stands out more. It's got a yeah. buddy seat, which at an auto show, yeah. Cornet RT was the family man's yeah. muscle car. So, yeah. you know, it, it kind of all fits. But but who knows? I mean, yeah. I don't know that there'd ever be any way to track it to that. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, we'll, yeah. we'll stop that one there. We already talked about the GTA. Yeah. You want to talk about the race car now? Yeah, we can do that.